Good morning, guests. Good morning, graduands. Welcome to your award ceremony. While you are waiting, we hope that you've enjoyed the music performed by our Royal Birmingham Conservatoire Brass Ensemble. Thank you for joining us on this wonderful day to celebrate the achievements of our graduands. To ensure you enjoy the proceedings, we have a few requests and announcements. First of all, we are not expecting any testing of the fire alarm or any other disruption today, but if the alarm does sound or there is an emergency, you will be given directions by the nearest door steward so that you can proceed quickly and safely to the nearest emergency exits. Secondly, please turn all mobile phones to silent or switch them off completely. We welcome the taking of photos and videos, but if you're doing so, please do not stand or block the view of others in the audience. We have more than 300 students graduating today, and each one who crosses the stage is very important to us. So please do clap and cheer as loudly as you wish as your graduate crosses the stage. The ceremony is expected to last approximately one and a half hours. For families with small children, if your child becomes unsettled, we have a comfortable viewing room where you can still watch the proceedings and tend to your child. Your nearest door steward will be able to help you with that. Graduands, this is important for you. You have been seated carefully in any, in, and in a particular order to ensure that every person who crosses the stage does so in the correct sequence. Please do stay in your assigned seats, and when you are asked to process out of your rows, please do not move out of your assigned order. It is important that you are sitting in the seat indicated on your student registration card, and please do keep a hold of those cards until you reach the stage. If you have moved seats for any reason, now would be a good time to get back into the correct seat. When you come back into the auditorium to enjoy the rest of the ceremony, it is likely you will sit in a different seat, so please do not leave anything behind. Please be courteous to all those still to cross the stage by clapping and celebrating their achievements too. Please, don't use, please do not use your mobile phones during the ceremony to text or make calls or to distract other graduands from enjoying their proceedings. Our graduation ceremonies are formal occasions that follow a traditional format. They begin with a fanfare, following which the academic procession and the vice-chancellor's procession will enter the hall. At the end of the ceremony, once the vice-chancellor closes proceedings, could I please ask graduates to stand once again and for guests to remain in their places until the procession has exited the hall, after which you'll be able to join your parties to celebrate your graduates' achievements and enjoy the rest of your day. Please do remember that we have live music and complimentary, complimentary refreshments available in the circle levels of the Symphony Hall foyer. Now we are about to begin. Can I please ask everyone to stand, if you are able, as the processions enter the hall. Thank you.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's my privilege to be the Vice Chancellor of Birmingham City University, and I will be presiding over this ceremony. And I'm delighted, therefore, to announce that this congregation is now open. Please be seated. <laughs> Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, but of course, most particularly, all of you who are celebrating your graduations today, it is such a pleasure to have the opportunity to participate in this special day. And I'm delighted to welcome all of you to Birmingham City University's graduation celebrations. This summer's congregations are, of course, the first that we have been able to hold in person since January 2020. So welcome to this magnificent Symphony Hall in the heart of Birmingham, the city that we are very proud to call our home. And graduation is always a pleasure. It doesn't matter how many times you do it, because for those of you who are coming across the stage today, it is such a special day. It is such an opportunity to recognize what you have achieved. But I have to say that the graduations that we have been doing this summer, after that gap of two and a half years, have felt even more special. So thank you very much, not just to all our graduates who have come back today, but to all of you who have come to support them and to celebrate with them. I know sometimes these will have been long journeys and even getting across the West Midlands is often no fun. So thank you very much indeed for coming and joining us. And I want to start by acknowledging that those of you who are celebrating your graduations today have of course had one of the most unusual student journeys of any of us could have experienced. But here we are and we're now in a position to be able to give you the celebration that you richly deserve. And I'm delighted that during July and during August, we will do what we promised and give each and every student who has graduated from BCU over the past couple of years, the opportunity to participate in one of these ceremonies without restrictions, without compromise, and in the presence of those who love and wish to celebrate with you. So graduates, this is of course absolutely your day. But I think this year, above all, we need to start by acknowledging all of those who have supported you on your journey. I particularly want to acknowledge the representatives of the academic community who are up here on stage with me, our many professional services staff who work tirelessly behind the scenes, both at the university and then, of course, up here for graduations. But above all, I think we need to acknowledge the support that you have had when times were tough from your friends, your family, and your supporters. So graduates, could we start with a huge round of applause for everyone who has supported you? <laughs> Often in graduation speeches, the thing that seems most important to talk about is the impact of change, the way that change is going to impact on your lives going forward. But I have felt, in some respects, that there's no need to talk to you about that because you have seen change in real time and on a grand scale, change which impacted almost overnight on every aspect of your lives. So you, our graduates, and indeed the rest of the BCU student community, no change better than most. But I do hope that notwithstanding the challenges that you have faced, you'll also remember BCU for all of the right reasons too. The friendships that you made, the communities that you have been part of, as well, of course, as the learning that we are celebrating today. And I do particularly want to make this point. We gather today, formally, to celebrate 
the degrees and qualifications that you have achieved, and that's right. But you have achieved so much more than that. During the disruption of the last couple of years, in order to be here, you have shown determination, you've demonstrated adaptability, you've shown your resilience, and those are all key skills and attributes that you're going to need in the rest of your lives, and that's what makes today a celebration of your remarkable achievement. But even during the challenges of the last couple of years, the university and indeed the world around us has continued to change and develop. Those of you who've been down on the City South campus will have seen the redevelopment of the wonderful Skills Hub facilities. If you've been up on our city centre campus in the last year, you will have seen the iconic old Belmont Works building on Jennings Road coming back to life as part of our university. And I was particularly pleased that we were bringing Belmont Works back to life because it's a symbol of the way in which our university is part of the fabric of the city around us and indeed has been for almost 180 years now. And Birmingham as a city has been hard hit by the last couple of years. But of course, there is a real sense of buzz and excitement. And much of that at the moment is left over from what were an enormously successful Commonwealth Games. And Birmingham and indeed the West Midlands, the culture is very much self-deprecating. We don't like to show off. So it was wonderful to see Birmingham and the West Midlands performing with such confidence and such style on an international stage. I felt very proud. And if you haven't already had the opportunity to go and take a selfie down with the bull at the other end of Centenary Square, let me encourage you to do that. And of course, the bull itself is set against a backdrop of iconic development, whether that's the Birmingham City Library, whether that's the Paradise Circus development, whether that's indeed this building, the ICC itself, which has changed and extended during the period of the pandemic. So it's a wonderful time to be in Birmingham. And because BCU is so deeply part of the city, it's no surprise to see how our students were part of the preparation for the games. We saw our costume design students design the costume for the Birmingham 2022 festival, Wondrous Stories. You may have caught on the BBC West Midlands Today programme yesterday, our jewellery students celebrating the fact that they had designed the medals for the Commonwealth Games. A, a, a heritage of medal making right here in the city's jewellery quarter. And those are links about the way in which we engage with the city that reinforce the point that we see ourselves rightly as the university for the city. And what the last couple of years has made very clear is why what happens in universities is so important. The role of research, the role of knowledge creation, but also the development of new practices and understandings of practice. We could argue that nothing would bring that more vividly to life than the speed with which new vaccines were developed in order to mitigate the impact of the pandemic. But equally, when we saw the impact of the pandemic on schools and on kids who desperately needed to get their education, we saw how the development of new practice was equally important. Knowledge has never been more important, and that's something that each of you provides evidence of as you celebrate your graduation today. And for me, that's why this celebration is so important. That's why we take the time and trouble to get dressed up in this rather unlikely costume. Because it's about the ceremonial, it's about the ceremonious, it's about things that make today memorable because today deserves to be memorable because we're celebrating your very considerable achievement. Because graduates are important. They're important in every society. The research tells us that graduates live longer, that graduates are more productive, that graduates contribute more 
to society around them because they're more likely to volunteer, to vote, to lead. Graduates tend to have better health. Mind you, the same research tells us that graduates drink less. Above all, though, graduates are best placed to deal with change. And many of you, I hope all of you, will lead long, long lives. And what that means is that during your lives, the world in which you live will change not once, but many, many times. And you'll have not one career, but many careers. And throughout your life, you will need to master new skills and new knowledge and to learn afresh. And that's why being a graduate is so important. You have the skills that equip you to learn. You have the habits of learning. So today, what we're celebrating is not just what you have achieved, considerable though that is. We're also celebrating what you're going to go on to achieve in your future. And our history can be dated all the way back to 1843, when we were founded as the wonderfully titled Birmingham Government School of Design. And the Victorians founded that institution because they wanted to help the manufacturers of what was already becoming one of the great workshops of the world to compete on a global stage. And during that almost 180 years now, we've changed. We've changed often, but we have stayed true to the founding purpose in that we remain focused on learning that makes a difference in the world, in ensuring that our graduates all around the world make a difference in their societies. So my challenge to you this morning is that today is absolutely, rightly, about celebrating your considerable personal achievement and your personal transformation. But please also see it as part of a broader commitment, a commitment to transforming the world around you. You'll all have seen the IMBCU images around campus, around the ICC, around the city itself. And that came from our student body. And when we talked to them about what did IMBCU mean, the words that came back to us were something about pride, about confidence, but above all, that strong sense of belonging which characterizes our university. So IMBCU isn't a slogan, it's about being part of an extraordinary family and you'll always be part of our BCU community. But graduates, that's enough from me because today is very much your day and you have waited, many of you, for a long time to have this day. It's a day when you celebrate achieving what you set out to do in some cases a long, long time ago, and that is a particularly remarkable achievement. So my warmest congratulations to you all. Very well done. I now call upon the Pro Vice Chancellor and Executive Dean of the Faculty of Health, Education and Life Sciences, Professor Ian Blair, to commence the presentation of award holders and on the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Steve Rymel, to receive the students. Vice Chancellor, as Pro Vice Chancellor and Executive Dean, I present students from the Faculty of Health, Education and Life Sciences who have qualified for the award of degrees, diplomas, and certificates. I invite Professor Kevin Mattinson to the lectern to present award holders from the School of Education and Social Work. Postgraduate certificates in education in School Direct primary and early years with qualified teacher status in partnership with Bishop Chaloner Catholic College, Sarah Alcock. <laughs> Robert Pipe. <laughs> Jack Chigoning. <Thank> <laughs> 
Postgraduate certificates in education, school direct, primary and early years with qualified teacher status, special educational needs in partnership with Bishop Challoner Catholic College. Emily Brown. Lisa Roberts-White. Amy Woodward. Postgraduate certificates in education in school direct primary and early years with qualified teacher status, five to 11 years in partnership with Green Home Primary School, Jade Alexander. <laughs> Tia Hessen Channer. <laughs> Ravji Takar. Postgraduate Certificate in Education in School Direct Primary and Early Years with Qualified Teacher Status, Jordan Barber. <laughs> Lowry Belson. <laughs> Laura Billingham. <laughs> Catherine Bolton. <laughs> Veronica Breslin. Chloe Davis. <laughs> Kelsey Fav Falvey. Sorry. <laughs> Danielle Fannell. <laughs> Nafisa Farid. <laughs> Roya Galloway. <laughs> Georgina Hall. Eleanor Harvey. <laughs> Rebecca Hooley. <laughs> Beth Howell. <laughs> Liam Hunt. <laughs> Alexandra Jones. <laughs> Moriam Khan. Georgia Payne. <laughs> Rachel Powell. <laughs> Robert Ramsey. <laughs> Bethany Robbins. <laughs> Michaela Sagu. <laughs> Emily Slater. Hayley Stringer. <laughs> Jessica Terry. <laughs> Rima Varand. <laughs> Manpreet Waraik. <laughs> Postgraduate Certificate in Education Studies in School Direct Primary and Early Years, Amna Asghar. Postgraduate Certificate in Education in Primary Early Years, Physical Education with Qualified Teacher Status, Jonathan Coupland. <laughs> Imogen Freeman. <laughs> Olivia Ledgster. <laughs> Talitha Pritchard. <laughs> Manpreet Puraval. Postgraduate Certificates in Education in Primary and Early Years with Qualified Teacher Status, Three to Seven Years Pathway, Zetun Amla. <laughs> Hisham Ali Ahmed. <laughs> Naina Bajaj. <laughs> Alia Begum. Rajni Bacon, <laughs> Fatima Bibi, <laughs> Khadija Bibi, <laughs> Megan Bird, <laughs> Nashay Zadzi 
Ag Ag Agatha Chimbetete. Apologies. Anya Cunliffe. Holly Davis. Hannah Mae Gordon. Zabar Gulzar. Tara Hussain. Mariam Isharet. Salma Islam. Hena Khan. Rena Modwadia. Hannah Owens. Ruksha Rashid. Jandi Real. Eleanor Roper. Jaspreet Sandar. Alima Shabir. Katie Stimson. Hajot Tanda. Rebecca Williams. Wazan and I Wanzeri. Postgraduate Certificates in Education in Primary and Early Years with Qualified Teacher Status 5 to 11 Pathway, Husna Ahmed. <laughs> Seda Bakedo. <laughs> Reshme Begum. <laughs> Samina Begum. <laughs> Wamuna Bibi. Samina Bibi. <laughs> Rahim Bilal. <laughs> Fatima Botan. <laughs> Robert Daly. <laughs> Shannon Dillon. <laughs> Kyle Freeth. <laughs> Mirin Guri. James Hobson. <laughs> Iptisan Huri. <laughs> Aksa Hussein. <laughs> Pavandeep Kaur. <laughs> Haram Kauza. <laughs> Jamila Katoon. Iram Mariam. <laughs> Tania Maya. <laughs> Anwar Muhammad. <laughs> Samira Naz. <laughs> Samia Naz. <laughs> Sean Pearson. Rebecca Probert. <laughs> Sida Jabin Samad. <laughs> Rabia Shah. <laughs> Lauren Sharkey. <laughs> Jessica Staley. <laughs> Rian Street. Shania Thompson. <laughs> Rennie Thompson Beckham. <laughs> Fatima Tifo. <laughs> Amrit Verdi. <laughs> Claire Wall. <laughs> Robin Whiteoak. 
Halima Yafai. <laughs> Maria Zafar. Postgraduate Certificates in Education Studies in Primary and Early Years, Asra Suleiman. Postgraduate Certificates in Education in Primary and Early Years with Qualified Teacher Status, Mathematics Specialism, Saman Bibi. Saeed Mahmood. Neelam Nasir. Rajwinder Richard Raj. Postgraduate Certificate in Education in Primary Early Years with Qualified Teacher Status, Special Education Needs Specialism, Mohammed Usman Ajmal. <laughs> Hattie Boyle. <laughs> Evelyn Easthope. <laughs> Nazma Fatima. <laughs> Laurel Gaynor. Rezewana Kauza. <laughs> Anne Katicha. <laughs> Tara Philby. <laughs> Victoria Ruff. <laughs> Molly Rush. <laughs> Catherine Stowe. Sabia Taj. <laughs> Eleanor Wilding. <laughs> Ellie Williams. <laughs> Letitia Williams. <laughs> Postgraduate Certificate in Education Studies in Primary and Early Years, Megan Atkins. And this completes the first presentation of awards to graduates from the School of Education and Social Work. And this completes the first presentation of graduates from the Faculty of Health, Education and Life Sciences. I now invite the Vice Chancellor to introduce the recipient of the honorary, Doctor of, uh, the, the honorary award of Doctor of the University. Ladies and gentlemen, we are this morning delighted to be conferring the award of Doctor of the University upon Pat Smart, and I now call upon the Executive Dean to give the citation. Vice Chancellor, distinguished guests, colleagues, graduates, today we confer the degree of Honorary Doctor of Birmingham City University Honoris Kaiser on Pat Smart. Ladies and gentlemen, it seems likely that most of us here would agree that it's important that everyone should start off with the same chances in life, regardless of income, property, race or gender. It is also likely that most of us would agree that we seem to be quite a long way off that idea and indeed getting further. Closing the gap between the haves and have-nots requires many kinds of policy interventions, but few of them are more significant than that of ensuring that a child from a family on benefits has access to the same level of education as one who spends half-term on daddy's super yacht. The differentials are stark. The Department of Education website tells us that the average annual allocation per state pupil in England is currently £5,101. For a middle-ranking private school in our region, the fees are about the same, but only if you hang around for one term. How to achieve excellence for all when the playing field is so very far from level has been a lifetime preoccupation for our guest of honour today, Pat Smart. Pat is the Chief Executive and Executive Head of the CREATE Partnership Trust, which includes the Greek Teaching School, the Greek Conway, Hodge Hill, and Brookfields Primary School. She's also Vice Chair of the Birmingham Education Partnership, 
whose aim is to bring senior leaders together in the interest of ensuring that all our city's children receive the education they deserve and have a legitimate aspiration met like any other. Her leadership is built on wide experience. She has taught in five local authority areas as well as an international school. She has crossed the fence to lead Ofsted inspections and has taken over the leadership of or given support to schools deemed to have been in crisis. It would be wrong to call her a fixer because her aims have always been long-term to establish the conditions for success that lasts beyond the next league table rating. It would also be wrong because her ethos, as you will have guessed from her list of roles, is that progress can only be achieved through constructive partnership. Expectations, standards, systems, governance. You only improve those things by working with others. If the processes are collective, it is still right that some of the rewards, and indeed the awards, should be personal. In 2009, Pat was designated the National Leader of Education, with GREET as a national supported school. In the Queen's Birthday Honours List of 2018, she was awarded a CPE. Leadership also means standing up for what you believe in and risking controversy. You may recall the infamous Trojan Horse episode of 2014 when it was alleged that the Parkview Educational Trust had fallen under the influence of hardline religious ideology. Five of its 21 schools were rated inadequate. The board of the trust stood down. Three outstanding head teachers were called in uh, to fill their place. These included Pat Smart. Others would have shunned the challenge, but this was an opportunity to do what she had always done, to safeguard and promote the long-term interests of all children. Here at the university, we understand as well as anyone the vital importance of partnerships in the pursuit of not just success, but of equality. On this day, when so many of our students are here to celebrate the awards their individual efforts have brought, it is timely to celebrate a great teacher and leader in Birmingham, who reminds us all that it is from others that we learn most and that all children are entitled to the same prospects, however much their schooling costs or wherever they spend their half term. So, distinguished guests, colleagues, graduates, it gives me great pleasure to invite the Vice-Chancellor to confer the degree of Honorary Doctor of Birmingham City University, Honoris Causa, on Pat Smart. As Vice-Chancellor, I exercise the authority of the University's Academic Board, and I'm delighted to confer the award of Doctor of the University in Auris Causa on Pat Smart, and I invite you, Deputy Vice-Chancellor, to present the commemorative medal. That completes the conferment of the award of Doctor of the University in Auris Causa, and I now invite Pat to address the congregation. Vice-Chancellor, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's with great honour and much humility that I accept the honorary award of Doctor of the University. When I look back to see previous recipients, I see artists and musicians, academics, scientists, and well-known people from the world of business, enterprise, and industry. And then there are people like me who've just worked hard in their chosen career within public service because they've discovered that making a commitment also means that they can make a difference to other people's lives. And that brings job satisfaction, of course, and great joy. First of all, I would like to congratulate you all. What a wonderful achievement to have had a successful university education, especially if, like me, you are the first in your family to have had that opportunity. I was born in Hansworth, Birmingham, of migrant parents from Ireland. They didn't have much money, but they did have expectation and ambition. I only owned one book as a child. Randomly, somebody bought me Princess Margaret's wedding book. But I visited the library every Saturday to collect my three books, and I'd usually read them at least once by Sunday. 
Other than that, I read anything else that I could get my hands on, and that opportunity to read set me up for life. Incidentally, I made sure that my own children had a great home library, but they were no more voracious readers than I was. As you new graduates embark on the next stage of your life and work, hopefully now you're, you've moved into the world of work for the first time, or perhaps a complete change of career, you must feel excited or nervous about your prospects. And from my own experience and learning, I hope in this brief presentation to help you to consider five considerations for your future, all of which are interrelated. The first is, you have the power to design your future. It maybe doesn't feel like that at the moment. Maybe you're not yet in the job you, hope, you have hopes for, or maybe you're worrying about how to manage financially, or what are the next steps might be in forming an independent life. It's a lot to think about, as well as your professional future. But don't lose your desire to do well. Seize every opportunity that comes your way and learn from every experience, positive and negative. And if you have started on the jobs round, have you done everything possible to present yourself well to that expect expected or prospective employer? And once you get into the world of work, and I think many of you are already, are you adaptable to those new situations and expectations? Sometimes it's hard to find the right path when you're new in a context, and that brings me to my second point. Stay authentic. Moving into the employment market comes with a health warning. It's important to stay true to who you are. There will no doubt be times when you are challenged to make or take part in decisions that you are uncertain about or even disagree with. And these situations can be incredibly difficult for you to manage emotionally, but it's important to stay true to who you are. Getting onto the career ladder and moving up from rung to rung does not have to be at the expense of your own values in terms of your self-respect or your relationships with or treatment of other people. And that brings me to the third point. Treat others as you would want to be treated. It is inevitable that you will have to work with people who will never be your best friends. My advice is always to maintain your professionalism and show you are there to do a job. That doesn't mean, of course, that you should avoid the social invitations or some of the natural chat that people have when they work together. Personally, I have made the difficult decision to retire this month as the result of a health matter last year. To be honest, I'm struggling with it, not knowing if, if I've made the right decision. I have to learn to let go. And that's difficult because I've been the one in charge the whole time. But the one thing that has really struck me in the last few months and weeks is that I've been approached by quite a few staff who've said that they remember when I've praised them or supported them. One described how she'd approached me for some flexible working to enable her to care for her disabled child. She said it had meant so much to her that I'd gone above and beyond to assist her. She said that life at home had been really tough and that work had given her respite. I certainly remember making arrangements for her in the school, but I must confess I did it because she was a fantastic teacher. I saw that the school would gain greater benefit from her working odd hours part-time than in losing her to another school. So I remembered the leadership decision, but she remembered the kindness I showed. And there were tears from both of us when she told me. I arrived at my first headship with three children of my own, aged five, three, and one, and I wondered if I was mad at the time and if I could cope. A number of staff said they were pleased I was a working mother as they thought I would be more understanding of their own family contexts. And it's probably true, I did understand. And I just hope that my own family didn't lose out because of the hours that I put in. My three were certainly dragged into school with me in some of the holidays and became adept at laminating displays and removing staples as long as I kept them going with snacks and the playground. So in terms of colleagues, make sure you have good relationships with them. You will need them on the tough days when you need a shoulder to cry on. You will find that they have particular straight traits or skills that you can tap into. You will be able to find joint solutions to problems which appear too challenging for you to manage independently. And ultimately, you will find that they turn to you and ask your opinion. 
In my first teaching post, I didn't feel that happened much. I was perceived as the baby of a small staff of just nine teachers in a Catholic junior school. But my second post at the Frankfurt International School, I suddenly discovered how much I had to give as well as receive. And this was especially pleasing as I worked alongside other international teachers. Each of us brings our own context to a job. And that brings me to my fourth point. Learn from and with other people. It's so important working in public service that it is seen just as that, service to others. Whatever our job, we have a duty to support all our communities, not just those that we know best or that are like us. Starting as a new graduate doesn't mean you have to know everything or even pretend to. I hope that many of you will already have started on the career path and my advice to you would be keep learning. In Frankfurt, the American principal guided me, supported me, and praised me. He modeled how to work with people to get the best out of them. It was very much the way I had worked with children, and now I could see this was the way to work with all people, whatever their background, level of education, or experience. I returned to the UK five years later, full of professional confidence and eager to undertake further academic study to get a better grasp of up-to-date methodology and some of the educational issues that I was really interested in, anti-racism, the celebration of diversity, and the promotion of equal opportunities. My, <clears throat> my in-service degree was actually obtained at this university's forerunner, Birmingham Polytechnic. That course was amazing, and I was very successful, despite, I remember, writing my dissertation with a six-month-old baby on my knee. It led to a string of great jobs, and in all of them, I could put my experience and values into operation in working with local communities and guiding colleagues to achieve the best for them. And this was crucial. My children at school deserved exactly the same opportunities as my children at home. When I started as head teacher, no one had expectations that our children would be successful academically and professionally. Now, our alumni are graduates with master's degrees, teaching qualifications, and more. We have appointed some of them to our trust. I think that the fuss we made to make the caps and gowns for our year six leavers graduation every year contributed to their personal ambition. So I will take the credit for that. My own personal commitment to equalities has been realized as I've seen my children and staff grow to be able to work alongside a range of individuals and groups, finding ways to communicate and sometimes to challenge has been amongst the most rewarding aspects of my career. And my learning through my degree gave me the educational research context that I could draw on when I needed to challenge narrow-mindedness or worse. There are always paths through what seem to be cultural barriers and every participant is better off for having been able to find solutions. And so the final point is a moment of reflection for you. Understand your influence. Once you find your feet in the job market, you will discover that you have something to offer and people will listen to you. When my children went to school, I realized that their teacher had potentially more influence on them than me. My advice to my daughter in her interview for her first teaching job was, let them see the light shining in your eyes when you talk about teaching the children. Show the love. She did that and she got the job. And she trained here at BCU, incidentally, so I can't take all the credit. But seriously, I don't think you have influence. Don't think that you don't have influence on others. Whatever your job, you will be expected to be a role model. People will watch you, listen to you, copy you, and try to emulate. And if you work with the vulnerable, they will rely on you and need you. And even if they don't tell you at the time, they will appreciate you. I can still remember some of the names of children in my first class and the challenges I had to grapple with, giving me feelings of both success and failure in that first job. We can all look back at successes and failures. The important message is to learn from them. And although I will have moved on in a couple of weeks' time, I hope that my contribution will continue through voluntary work in the education sector. This is not a thank you and goodbye. I am very envious of you all just starting on this fabulous journey. 
Many, many congratulations to all in the hall today. The graduates, of course, your friends and families here and elsewhere who have supported you and want to celebrate with you, and not forgetting our university colleagues who have guided you. There is immense pride all round. What a wonderful event in this great city. Well done, everyone. I now invite Professor Ian Blair to continue the presentation of award holders from the faculty. And I invite Professor Kevin Mattinson to return to the lectern to continue the presentation of award holders from the School of Education and Social Work. <clears throat> Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Primary Education with Qualified Teacher Status, Hassan Abdullah. Rim Abdullah. Jinsi Abraham. Mariam Adil. Hafsa Ahmed. Hafsa Ahmed. Zara Ahmed. Amina Akhtar. <laughs> Minas Akhtar. <laughs> Musaleen Akhtar. <laughs> Maria Ali. <laughs> Maria Azam. Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Primary Education, Ruth Bailey. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Primary Education with Qualified Teacher Status, Emma Banzed Jati. <laughs> Amber Barras. <laughs> Alicia Bashir. <laughs> Ellie Batterham. Shahira Begum. <laughs> Tarira Begum. <laughs> Hannah Benton. <laughs> Sohaila B. <laughs> Olivia Bowden. <laughs> Keelan Bradley. Darcy Bradnick. <laughs> Honor Bridgman. Darcy Buchan. Lucy Bunny. Olivia Butler. Hannah Carson. Neve Cartwright. <laughs> Michaela Cassell. <laughs> Eden Cleaver. <laughs> Samantha Ann Clements. <laughs> Neve Clifford. <laughs> Megan Cole. <laughs> Jay Coley. Leah Collins. <laughs> Sophie May Collins. <laughs> Louis Cope. <laughs> Daniela Dimitri. <laughs> Priya Devi Shahal. <laughs> Anisha Duff. <laughs> Katie Diamond. Katie Docker, <laughs> Lucy Dodwell, <laughs> Chloe Dolman, 
Megan Dowley. Jordan Ellishaw. Ryan Eustace. Chloe Evans. Natasha Finch. Sharan Fiaz. Evelyn Fisher. Callum Flukes. Harriet Flynn. Louisa French. <clears throat> Rebecca Fry. Rachel Ferno Porter. Macaulay Gee. Abigail Gent. Lauren Gostick. Samantha Griffiths. Hannah Guy. Aisha Habib. Simon Hoke. Chloe Harding. Tasmin Harding. Leah Harris. Sally Harrison. Rebecca Harrison Brandon. Abby Havenhand. Catherine Hemingway. Ben Hobis. Eleanor Hope. Alicia Hussain. Amira Hussain. Bhutana Hussain. Falik Hussain. Saba Hussain. Poppy Ingram. Mariam Iqbal. Mohammed Iqbal. Kelly Jennings. Nazma Kai. Kiran Deep Kaur. Sumanpreet Kaur. Madia Kauza. <laughs> Aliyah Khan. <laughs> Hanisa Khan. <laughs> Nabila Khan. <laughs> Arifa Katoon. <laughs> Jessica Kings. Lois Kitchen. <laughs> Sasha Lambill Brown. <laughs> Kalia Lawrence. <laughs> Martina Lenartovich. <laughs> Megan Lennon. <laughs> Olivia Lissimore. <laughs> Natasha Lord. Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Primary Education Studies, Charles Lovett. Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Primary Education with Qualified Teacher Status, Yasmin Mahmoud. Halima, Saad, sorry, Halima Saadi Mahmoud. Summer Majid. Bethany Mallet. Grace Marlborough. Bethany Martin. Leah Martin. 
Anissa Mariam. Hansa Mariam. Eleanor Mayling. Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Primary Education Studies, Eva McWilliam. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Primary Education with Qualified Teacher Status, Faiza Mehmood. <laughs> Lillian Marie Mitchell. <laughs> Yasmin Mohammed. <laughs> Tamani Mohammed. Kelsey Munro. <laughs> Onila Mustafa. <laughs> Usman Naushin. <laughs> Rebecca Negu. <laughs> Francesca O'Loughlin. <laughs> Jade Oxley. <laughs> Macy Painter. Hassan Patel. <laughs> Holly Perrett. <laughs> Georgia Picknell. <laughs> Alexandra Plummer. <laughs> Laura Powell. <laughs> Caitlin Prentice. <laughs> Isha Rahman. Rochelle Rundawa. <laughs> Eamon Rashid. <laughs> Sarah Rashid. <laughs> Kainat Mevish Rashul. <laughs> Alicia Raza. <laughs> Sakina Raza. Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Primary Education Studies, Hannah Reeves. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Primary Education with Qualified Teacher Status, Zenika Richards. <laughs> Tara Rockneen. <laughs> Charlotte Rowlands. <laughs> Jessica Rowlands. Billy Ryan. <laughs> Molly Ryan. <laughs> Shital Sadev. <laughs> Adiba Sajid. <laughs> Amreen Sarai. <laughs> Melissa Saunders. <laughs> Thomas Scholes. Sana Shabir. <laughs> Umayma Shabir. <laughs> Samra Shaheen. <laughs> Sana Shaheen. <laughs> Nazia Sheikh. <laughs> Ikra Shiraz. <laughs> Sadia Shaukat. Ikra Shuja. <laughs> Takia Simeon Smith. <laughs> Amber Slade. <laughs> Chris Smith. <laughs> Hannah Smith. <laughs> Hannah Solom. Thomas Stables. <laughs> Sabiya Suleiman. <laughs> Kieran Tandy. <laughs> Chloe Taylor. <laughs> Bethany Thompson. <laughs> Georgina Thompson. <laughs> 
Kia Tyler. <laughs> Runa Udin. <laughs> Meg Ven Catechellum. <laughs> Halima Wahi. <laughs> Lee Walker. <laughs> Jessica Watson. <laughs> Abby Whitehouse. Mohamed Wahi, <laughs> Catherine Williams, <laughs> Olivia Williams, <laughs> Sinead Willis, <laughs> Charles Wilson, <laughs> Monica Worm Layton, <laughs> Clara Yardley. Sana Youssef. <laughs> Sana Zachariah. <laughs> Certificate of Higher Education in Primary Education Studies, Jesse Ann Orchard. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Primary and Early Years Education with Qualified Teacher Status, Daniel Bees. <laughs> Lauren Danks. Emmy Johnson, <laughs> Stephanie Wedderburn, <laughs> Emma Wilson, <laughs> Grace Yee, <laughs> Postgraduate Certificate in Education in Primary and Early Years with Qualified Teacher Status, 5 to 11 years, Kieran Fatima. And this completes the presentation of awards to graduates from the School of Education and Social Work. This completes the presentation of graduates from the Faculty of Health, Education and Life Sciences. I now invite the Vice-Chancellor to close the proceedings. Before we draw this congregation to a close, and I know it's never a good idea to come between you and the next stage of your celebrations, but can I suggest we have one more great round of applause for what our graduating students have achieved. Wow, that was richly deserved. There is one other group of people here that I would just like to recognize, and that is our fantastic musicians. A round of applause, please. As I say, I won't come between you and the next stage of your celebration, so I now declare this long-delayed congregation closed, and I'd be very grateful if guests could all stand while the stage processions now leave the hall. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>